So one of the things, so one of the things that you have to understand about your career is that you may not consider a place to be your home at the time, but they can always reach out years later and ask you to return. This is something that is happening to me right now. Uh, I got really lucky in my career and managed to score a executive role at a Fortune 50 company. I was a director level person and I managed 115 people officially and around 200 people unofficially because I was an engineering manager and I had to work with different teams. And also there were some people that were kind of shared unofficially uh, because of how the organization was, was set up uh, between me and another director. And so I did my best in that role. And as a result of that, they offered me a VP role and I could not accept that because I had family obligations that made it impossible for me to move. And still, I still have family obligations that make it impossible to move. And that is why now that they're reaching out to me, I'm trying not to get my hopes up because I recognize that it would be great for my career for me to return. I understand that the title and the leadership role is something that has a lot of responsibility and it's something that I'm up for. I'm up for the challenge. My biggest issue is I know from my prior experiences at the company that I am going to be dealing with a lot of people who are not as technical as me. And so I would have to go into a very different mindset than as a developer. And, and that is part of growth in your career. But at the same time, I'm trying not to get my hopes up because I recognize that I might have grown differently than what they need. And so as a result of that, they may not be open to the idea of hiring somebody who is still as interested in innovation and all the things that I wasn't back then. They're a bigger company now. They've merged. They've, you know, they got bought by another company technically. I'm not really sure how that worked. I think it was a reverse merger or something. And so because of that, I can't look at them and think of them as the same company they used to be. And so as part of that, I just replied to the executive recruiter that contacted me and reached out and I let him know that, you know, here's, you know, just in case you don't already have it, which I'm sure they do, but it's important to be upfront and honest either way. Uh, you know, here's the name of my prior director and, you know, here's, here's what happened. Here's, here's the VP role that I was offered. Here's why I couldn't accept it at the time. Basically just hashing out everything that happened years ago so that there's an official record from my side. Uh, because at the time there was so many people involved and it's been so long since, and so much has happened that there's no way for me to really know what the official record from their perspective is. And so I give them all the details I have, not because I'm trying to prove myself, but because I know that any data I give them, as long as it's accurate, will match whatever they have in their own records. And that will further prove me as better for the role. And so being upfront and honest is not just about getting in front of things or whatever, as some people will claim. It's about making sure that you have touch points and that you can actually validate the history and make sure that everybody is aligned. Because if they reach out to me about a, you know, about a dev job and I contact them and I'm from, hey, by the way, I was in the organization. I was, you know, I was an executive. I managed all these people. I, I led all these people every day. You know, here are the, you know, here are the PMs that I work with the most. And here are some people that can vouch for me, et cetera. Then that's a very different conversation than, hey, we want to hire you as a senior on this team and you'll be reporting to the senior lead. Instead, it will be, yeah, you're, oh, you, you, oh, okay. So you actually led, you were this guy, you were the I reached you about this role, but it turns out you were once this guy's boss's 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 boss. Maybe that role isn't good for you. And so for once in my life, I might actually be considered too junior for a role. And I'm okay with that because I'm typically told I'm over-experienced. Either way, it's going to put me in a better position and it's going to allow me 
define the role that I'm actually going to be effective in because I not only have the skills, but I'm going to get a good challenge. Something that is going to actually make me want to stay for the long term. And that is the important thing. Wanting to get hired as a, as a junior deb if you're super senior and have 20 years of experience is a non-starter. And so as you grow in your career, whether you're becoming a junior and then you go through and you've done the eight years needed to get to in intermediate or whatever, and you've spent the time to be able to, to be able to get into a more senior role because you've given yourself those skills from, from practice and from study and from everything, not just from doing the job constantly, because a lot of people just do the job and they don't grow. And at that point, it doesn't matter how many years of experience you have. You're still underqualified because you didn't force yourself to grow. And so as part of this, I am forcing myself to grow. I am forcing myself to learn. I am forcing myself to interact with people in a way that puts me in situations where I'm going to be able to grow. And that's why I replied the way I did, because I wanted to set the tone and I wanted to make sure they understood that if I was going to return to that company, it was not going to be in a situation where I was junior to the people that I was leading prior. And to be clear, it's okay if you're in those situations. But I also know that while I could contribute in those roles, and I also know that while I have the skills to be able to help, I also know that I could be more effective and more valuable to the company if I'm able to help optimize the productivity of the teams versus a few lines of code every day. And so as a result of that, I let them know that I was interested but I don't really have a lot of hope because I actually expect that they will reply and go, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, a uh, record show that we offered you a VP role. And then we tried to get you to for force you to move across the country and you refused. And I'll be like, yep, because I have family obligations and my integrity required that I keep to them. And maybe that'll be a good thing. Maybe it won't be. But if it's not a good thing, then it's not the company I want to work at anyway.